years since homosexual acts among men were decriminalised. Up until that point, the attitude of most men towards gay women was aggressive, hostile. I'm not talking about specific groups, but do you think generally people now are more enlightened, or is this as bad as ever out there? Well, of course, we know that um, by the early 1980s, public attitudes towards homosexuality shifted very significantly in favour of greater acceptance. And then we had the Conservative Governor Margaret Thatcher and her Family Values Campaign, her Victorian Values Campaign, and her denunciation at the 1987 uh, Tory Party Conference of the right to be gay. The Prime Minister of this country denounced the right to be gay. We also, of course, had the panic and hysteria around HIV and AIDS, which was often depicted as the gay plague. So in the 1980s, that shift towards greater acceptance went completely in reverse. So by the mid to late 1980s, once again, two-thirds of people said they believed homosexuality was always or mostly wrong. Two-thirds. Now, that began to change again in the early to mid-1990s. But even today, just two years ago, the British Social Attitude Survey found that still 36% of the British public believe that homosexuality is mostly or always wrong. 36%, even today. Now, your point was to say that male homosexuality was decriminalised in 1967. You're right, but it was very partial, limited decriminalisation. So it only applied to England and Wales. It wasn't extended to Scotland until 1980, not to Northern Ireland until 1982, and then only as a result of a judgment in the European Court of Human Rights, which declared the Northern Irish ban to be illegal. <laughs> All the anti-gay laws that remained on the statute books, because they were never repealed, it was just that the law said, in these certain narrow circumstances, homosexuality won't be prosecuted. But the laws remained on the statute books under the heading, quote, unnatural offences. And remained under that heading until 2003. Until 2003. Most aspects of gay male life remained criminalised. So, for example, uh, Post-1967, male homosexuality was only not prosecuted if it took place between two men and only two men, aged 21 or over, in the privacy of their own home, behind locked doors and windows, with a curtain drawn, and with no person other than themselves present in the house. So, for example, if you shared a flat with two or three other people, and you were gay, and you brought your partner home for the night, if you had sex in your bedroom, even a locked bedroom, while other flatmates were in other bedrooms, or the living room and the kitchen, both you and they were committing a criminal offence. You were having sex in circumstances which were not private, because other people were present in the house, and by their presence, they were deemed to be aiding and abetting a homosexual act which even though the act itself may have been lawful, aiding and abetting or facilitating it remained unlawful. Two men meeting in the street. Boy meets girl, perfect natural thing, in the street, the supermarket, counter, on the train station. If two men met in a public place and exchanged names and phone numbers, even if they never had sex, they were committing a criminal offence of, quote, soliciting or importuning for an immoral purpose. Because despite 1967 legislation, homosexuality was still deemed in law to be an immoral purpose. And that carried a penalty of two years in prison for meeting another man in a public place. Men were arrested and convicted for merely more than once winking or smiling at other men in the street. All these laws were only repealed in 2003, 11 years ago. So the law that sent Oscar Wilde to prison in 1895, the so-called gross indecency law, remained on the statute books 
until 2003. So did the law against anal sex, which was passed in the reign of King Henry VIII in 1533. It was only repealed 11 years ago. So we have made great progress, but in terms of formal legal equality, it's very, very recent. It's only since 2003, with the Sexual Offences Act of that year, that we now have a criminal code that does not discriminate based on sexual orientation. And that took a long, long, hard battle, including cases in the European Court of Human Rights, to overturn that. 